What a joy it is to spend these few minutes with you today. We're going to talk about a subject today that is just ultra, ultra important for the Christian. In fact, it's so important, I want to start this way. Suppose you could get nothing else to eat for your physical body from this minute forward. <laughs> you know, you'd fast a while, then pretty soon you'd say, boy, I'm in trouble. And we couldn't live long without nourishment, couldn't we? The same thing is true spiritually. Thank God you cannot lose your salvation. And thank God once you're saved, you are eternally secure in Christ. You're part of the family of God. But I'm going to tell you, one of the things that's going to determine the strength of your spirituality is reading the Bible, Bible study. So you'll see the title to lesson number six on page number 18 is Bible study. I want to say this about the Word of God, first of all, because it's so important. You'll find this in the midst of the lessons you read it. Second Timothy chapter three, two verses, verse 16 and 17. Listen carefully. The Bible says that all scripture, that's the Old Testament and the New Testament, the entire Bible, I hold this Bible up and look at you and say that God not only has inspired the Word of God, but watch this Word, He has preserved the Word of God for us. It, of course, was not given in English. It was given in Hebrew. It was given in Greek. Throughout the years, God maintained, preserved it. And we find versions of the Hebrew back from the Old Testament and what God did in the New Testament. It's a wonderful, wonderful study just, and you'll want to take this study at some point later on in your Christian life, just to see how God through the centuries has preserved this book so that I can hold it in my hand and tell you, this is the Word of God. This is the Word of God. And so that's the reason in 2 Timothy, where the Bible talks about in chapter 3, verse 16, that all Scripture is inspired of God. All 66 books of the Word of God. The Old Testament and the New Testament. Now listen to the rest of those great verses. All Scripture is inspired, is given by inspiration of God. Literally, that means God breathed, watch, and it's profitable. Now, why is the scripture profitable for doctrine? Doctrine is the teaching. Doctrine is what you need to believe. Now, we find some good gospel songs today that say, this is what I believe. It talks about the virgin birth of Christ. It talks about Jesus being the Son of God. It talks about Jesus is coming back again. How come we know that? Because we find it in the Bible. We find it in the Word of God. So the Bible is profitable for doctrine. Not only that, but something else I need and you need, reproof. How about that one? <laughs> I'm living one day and God says, hey, shape up. For reproof, for correction, instruction in righteousness. Now, why does God reprove us? Why does God correct us so that our course is pleasing to him? Why does God give us instruction in righteousness? Read on, that the man of God, that the Christian may be perfect. That word means mature. We start out as babes spiritually, just like physically you start out as a baby. Nothing wrong with a baby having a diaper on, is it? Nothing wrong with a baby only drinking milk. But wait a minute, when a kid gets 11, 12 years old, things ought to change a little bit. Most Christians, sad to say, never really mature very fast and very much. But we need to mature. How do we do that? Through our Bible study. I like the way this ends, that the man of God may be mature, perfect, Thoroughly furnished watch unto all good works. You want to be a good husband? Want to be a good wife? Want to be a good student? Want to be a good citizen? You want to be successful in your life? You want to accomplish what you ought to? You want to be able to get a certain age and look back and say, thank God I have lived profitably and I haven't wasted my life? How are you going to get that instruction? That's what the Bible is given for. Now I want to give you a couple of things that are very practical that'll help us in understanding this. See, the Bible has these eternal, these eternal precepts in it. Listen to what Jesus said to Satan when he talked about the, the importance of the Word of God. Luke chapter 4 and verse 4. You remember the story, and if you haven't, you ought to read that chapter where he talked about Satan tempting Jesus, and once Satan had tempted him, listen to the answer. It is written, notice Jesus himself was familiar with the Bible. I believe this. I believe that when Jesus was a child, he read the scripture. I believe his parents read it to him. I believe Jesus knew. In fact, we find when he was 12 years old, he was in the 
before some of the elders and the scribes and Pharisees and knew as much about the Old Testament. I don't think that happened because he was God in human flesh. I don't think he was born with a mind that had the whole Old Testament memorized. I believe Jesus immersed himself in the reading of the Scripture, and he understood it. So when Satan came and tempted him, he didn't say, well, let me see if I can get a book on psychology and find out how to live. He didn't say, let me see if I can go to Hollywood and get me an example. He didn't say, let me go to my culture. He said, it is written and you need to know the Bible. You're not going to know it all at one time, but little by little through some steps I'm going to give you in a minute, you become thoroughly acquainted with the Bible at whatever speed God has for you. Don't worry about it. Don't think I need it too fast. Just be patient and become acquainted with the Word of God. Now let's get back to what Jesus said to Satan. Luke chapter 4 and verse 4, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every one of the words of God. In other words, what was Jesus saying? I'm not supposed to live by bread. Much as you might need bread to nourish the body, but it's more important for me to recognize my nourishment is the Word of God. Now, that's going to be your nourishment too. Now, let's get to the three things I want to recommend you do. By the way, I want to just tell you, please go through this chapter Please answer the questions. The Bible is not just another book. It is God's book. Answer these. They'll help you. The answers are upside down. There's a lot of other passages that have been included for you to read. I want to challenge you to read those slowly. That's part of the Bible reading, the understanding. Now, here's the three things I want to tell you that will help you. I believe if you'll practice what I give you now, it'll get you started right. Number one, read the book of Proverbs. Read a chapter that corresponds to the day of the month. There are some months that have 31 days in it. That means you're going to read all 31 chapters. Read the chapter slowly. What's that going to do? It's going to give you instruction. How to handle your money, about marriage, about raising children, about work ethic. I mean, every subject is covered in Proverbs. I have been doing this for years and years and years. I want to tell you, God, even this morning, I was reading a chapter in Proverbs that corresponds to the day, and God said, hey, David, give me your attention here. You need to get this thing straight. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, you're going to find wisdom, Proverbs. You're going to find instruction. Let me say it again. Number one, read a chapter of Proverbs that corresponds to the day of the month. Number two, get a good devotional book. Get you a good devotional book. A good devotional book is going to be one that's going to assign you some reading so you can read, and then it's going to give you some devotional thoughts about it, so you're going to read a good devotional book. So number two, a good devotional book. By the way, ask your pastor for some help there. Go to somebody you have confidence in and say, can you recommend a good devotional book for me? Use a good devotional book. Number three, read for understanding. Don't read for quantity. Read for quality. Was a young Christian, man, I got challenged. You need to read 100 chapters a day, or you need to read the Bible through in two days. And I'm just being a little, you know. But the whole thing is, you're going to have a lot of challenges. And should you read the Bible through every year, it'd be a good thing to do. Four chapters a day, you read the Bible through. But wait a minute. Suppose you read the Bible through and you don't understand a thing you read because you read it too fast. It hadn't done you any good. So read for understanding. I tell people sometimes, I'd rather read two verses. And God get my attention. I have to go back and read them again and read them again and read them four or five times and meditate on them and look at the words in it and even get some definition. I'd rather read two verses and understand and let God speak to me because the Bible is God speaking to you. It's a correct communication to you. The greatest communicator that you'll ever find in your life is God himself. And God communicates through the word of God. So when you read, read for understanding. Don't just read for the quantity of the number of verses or chapters that you can read. Let me say the three things again, and I want you to start today. I want you to start now. Read Proverbs, a chapter of Proverbs that corresponds to the day of the month. Get you a good devotional book. Start out early in the morning and have your devotion. Have a time that God can speak to you through the reading of the Bible. You'll find prayer in that. We'll deal with that later on. But you're going to let God speak to you. And number three, when you read the Bible, read for understanding where you can understand what you read. What you hold in your hands when you hold a Bible, what you hold in your hands is one of the most treasured gifts that a person will ever have. It's yours. The same God that sent his son to die for you has preserved for you the word of God. 
What a joy it is as a love letter to read it all the way through and to see the wonderful instruction that God gives for us and to claim the blessings that God wants to put in your life. God bless you as you read this wonderful book.